Hello nerds, thank you for watching Generally Nerdy. This is your Weekend Nerddom Comic Books Edition for the week of May 14th, 2018. Comic Books looks like it might be our biggest video for this week, guys. That doesn't happen very often, but there's a lot of stuff going on. Justice League, Justice League, Justice League, uh, the DC price hike, Batgirl, the uh, Dark Horse crossover, there's Wolverine news, we're not just talking about DC. So much is going on, intro quickly. Quiet on the set, rolling. Hi, I am Bitsy Tellick. Hey, I'm Hale Appleman. I'm Walter Kane. I'm Rene Auvergenois. Odo on Deep Space Nine. Michael Dorn, Lieutenant Commander of War, Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, come and see me and hear me and talk to me and listen to me talk about myself. Hey man, this is Kevin Smith, often considered generally nerdy, and you are listening to what is often considered generally nerdy. On Generally Nerdy. You're listening to... Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Before we can jump into the news, guys, we have to jump into the sponsors. I skipped it last week and the week before because getting back into the swing of things, but now we're being sponsored again, kind of. Uh, all week, every one of these episodes is sponsored by two things. First of all, Punishshirt.com, the wonderful guys that gave me these shirts. Uh, for those of you that were took part in that contest, thank you very much for being a part of the contest. For the rest of you, though, there is this shirt over on Punishshirt.com. You can go get one for yourself. They're about 20 bucks. They're actually super high quality. Go support some small business over at Punishshirt.com. The other shirt is the new shirt up on the Teespring store. Teespring.com slash stores slash generally nerdy. It's the photographer shirt. Uh, I'm, do I'm doing a series of shirts that looks something like this. It's a play on an obvious, uh, already established brand that I just think is a little ridiculous. So this is the first of the series. I told you guys I was going to be adding some shirts. I actually have other uh, designs done. They just haven't made it up onto the, onto the store yet. They probably won't make it onto the store until next week. So this will be our first one in this vein. You can get your photographer shirt over at teespring.com slash stores slash generally nerdy. Now let's jump into the news, shall we? And coming out swinging, first things first, we've got No Justice number one is on stands. Spoiler alert! If you haven't read it, go read it. We'll talk about it. Uh, so yeah, you've been warned. But did Waller just screw all of the heroes? Uh, so I'm not, we're not going to go into great detail. We're just going to spoil the ending a little bit. Uh, Basically, what happens in this book is Brainiac comes and the Titans and the Teen Titans are trying to fight him, but then the Justice League comes down and says, no, 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 it's cool, he doesn't want to fight us this time, but not everybody's really on board with that because he kind of kidnaps them all back to his home planet to show them some stuff, but he lets Wonder Woman uh, get him with the lasso and, and so that they can see he's telling the truth. Really, what he's doing is he's getting together Earth's best warriors in and and trying to defeat what are called the Omega Titans. The Omega Titans are referred to as uh, there's four of them. So there's wisdom, entropy, wonder, and mystery. Uh, so wisdom actually destroyed or sucked the energy from uh, Brainiac's planet. And now they're sending, I don't remember if they spe specified which, but one of the Omega Titans, probably Entropy or something, is going, is now headed to Earth to suck the energy out of Earth. So Brainiac is trying to get all of the energies back for his planet, and he's also trying to stop these Omega Titans from uh, basically destroying the universe. All of that being said, that he has this grand plan that he starts to explain, but as he starts to explain it, they're back to Earth by that point, as he starts to explain it, Amanda Waller comes out and somehow blows up Brainiac's brain. So Brainiac is effectively dead, and now we have no idea why he grouped these specific people together for the No Justice story arc. Uh, so yeah, No Justice number one on shelves now. Go pick it up. 
weird stuff is going on, and that actually plays right into our next bit. Scott Snyder is introducing all kinds of extra Justice League mythology. Uh, not that that's a bad thing. <laughs> Scott Snyder is giving us more depth to this mythology than we knew we wanted, and now that we've heard about it, we definitely want it. Uh, the, pri the first bit is... Uh, uh, the lanterns. He he started talking about how we're going to get introduced to ultraviolet lanterns and infrared lanterns, so non-visible light spectrum lanterns, and we're going to be introduced into more colors, more visible light spectrum lanterns than we already have. So the whole lantern universe is just getting enormous at this point. Uh, and then the, the emotional ties to the visible spectrum stuff is getting expanded. Uh, so that's really crazy. And then the other thing, and this is all going to be happening in the Justice League books primarily. So one book, one, uh, one issue is going to be focused on Green Lanterns and Flash because he's going to be doing it in groups. And there's going to be apparently three minor arcs inside the overall arc that he's doing this first bit for Justice League. So the Flash is also getting an expansion to his mythology. Uh, his expansion is, we all know that Flash gets his, his power and his speed from what is referred to as the Speed Force. Well, a another part of the Speed Force, not the anti-Speed Force, uh, there's another part of the Speed Force referred to as the Still Force. And it's going to have ties to new villains and also some of the existing villains may have ties to it as well, maybe even subconsciously. So that seems, <laughs> that makes me want to start reading Flash, I'm not going to lie. That's just really, uh, yeah, I'm excited about this. So uh, somehow it's inside, he referred to it being inside of the Speed Force. The Still Force is going to be inside of the Speed Force. Uh, don't know how that's going to work, but uh, we're going to read it, man. And Martian Manhunter, his little trip across the uh, universe that he's been on for the last little while, since basically since Rebirth started, uh, he's going to be, to, come, to be coming back and giving us information about the things he found out on that trip. It's going to have something to do with his home planet, Mars, and how it got destroyed and how the events that caused its destruction are now affecting Earth, and the forces at work there are now at work here. So, very interesting. A lot of stuff is going on. The multiverse is getting crazy big, especially considering all of the stuff with Dark Knight's Metal. We're getting into antimatter and dark universe, and yeah, so much, so much, so much. And our next bit is Legion of Doom is making its way back to DC, and they might be led by Lex Luthor. Um, Scott Snyder is just telling us everything. He's giving us all of the good news, man. We got released the covers for the first five issues of Justice League that are post the No Justice story arc, and Cover number five has what appears to be the Legion of Doom and has Lex Luthor in front leading the Legion of Doom. So right now, Lex is a kind of anti-hero. So something is going to happen in the No Justice arc that is going to turn him back to the bad side, effectively. He's going back to the dark side because that's what Lex Luthor does. Uh, I, I It's... This is going into, we talked about this before, Snyder wants to make this kind of a callback at the same time he wants to expand the universe. And with Legion of Doom and then all of this infrared and ultraviolet and still force stuff, it, it sounds like that's exactly what he's doing. So DC writing is just getting so incredibly awesome right now. But that's all we've got for the that bit, anyway. Next, we're talking about the price hike for your comic books over at DC. A little while ago, they kind of jabbed fans and readers uh, by not releasing. You don't if you buy a physical DC book, you don't get a digital copy included with it. Over at Marvel, you do. 
But that was kind of to appease fans because Marvel raised their prices a little while ago from $2.99 to $3.99. Uh, but DC, in 2011 when this happened, DC said, we're drawing the line at $2.99. Uh, that's how much your comics are going to cost. And then they just broke that promise. Uh, now, every DC book, effectively, there are, like, some of the newer books, some of the stuff that <clears throat> doesn't have quite the following yet, those books are going to still be $2.99, but all of their tried-and-true books, all of their long-running series, are going to be $3.99 a book. So if you're buying four bucks, if you're buying a book a week, if you're reading one of their weekly publications, which they don't have a whole lot, most of them are bi-weekly, so it's two, that's two books a month. Let's, let's go on that. Let's say you're two books a month. That's $8 a month. It's not horrible until you consider uh, by tw at, at uh, 12 months, that's what? Uh, 116, no, uh, 96. It's 96, it's 100 bucks a year in just one book. Uh, so that kind of sucks. But hopefully they'll realize that the digital version doesn't really cost them a whole lot, a whole lot to do. Um, so they'll start to include that again with their once they hear all kinds of uh, hell from their fans. Um, yeah, people are understandably upset about that. Next on the list, we're talking about Batgirl and the Birds of Prey, issue number 22. This issue uh, is on stands now. This is the final book in this arc, and it's this book is not going to continue after this arc is done, so there is not going to be a number 23, but go get that book, read it. If you haven't, if you have, you're good. Otherwise, spoiler alert, skip forward a couple of minutes. Uh, so at the end of this book, again, we're not going into great detail. It's just good stuff to talk about. At the end of this book, uh, Batgirl Barbara Gordon becomes the Oracle again. Not because she gets uh, put in a wheelchair and she has to become the Oracle. She chooses to become the Oracle uh, again. Uh, there's, I mean, there's a lot involved in that, but there's no definitive answer of what that means for Batgirl, for the superhero version of Barbara Gordon. <clears throat> Uh, is she still going to occasionally be Batgirl, or is it just going to be Oracle? Uh, they don't really say. I'm going to pass this off to you guys. A, do you think that Barbara Gordon will do both duties? And B, do you think that that is a... Do you think it's feasible for her to be one or the other, or does she have to do both, both uh, jobs? Let's talk about that down low in the comments section. Next up on our list, we're talking about a crossover with DC Comics and Dark Horse Comics. Batman, Starman, and Hellboy? Uh, it appears that I, I couldn't find the exact name of the book. Um, it could be Pipeline number 1087, or it could just be uh, marked as Batman, Hellboy, Starman. I've seen it in, as both. I don't know which is which, but it, from what I, I've seen some preview pages from it, it looks like it reads just like you would expect, uh, because uh, Mike Mignola is in charge of it with James Robinson, both of whom have written for Batman, Robinson has written for Starman, and Mignola created Hellboy. Uh, it's actually Mignola's artwork that Hellboy is famous for having, and BPRD also uh, has a similar style, so I just... This sounds like, uh, this sounds like something we got from Nether Realm because it is something we got from Nether Realm. I feel like there's some sort of correlation between Hellboy being in Injustice Two and now this book actually coming to fruition. It appears though that uh, Mignola has kind of been trying to get this to happen for a little while, a few years or so. Um, Again, I feel like because NetherRealm got away with it, now they're going, oh, that does work. Hey, let's make a comic book about that. Uh, so, yeah, check it out. I couldn't... It is apparently on stands, though I couldn't find out exactly when the release date was. So maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Uh, go to your local comic book shop, have them look it up, and, and see if they can order it for you because it, it looks great. It's not groundbreaking by any stretch of the means, but it is. It, it scratches an itch that you didn't quite realize you had. 
And then to cap off this week's comic books video, we have a surprise Wolverine book over at Marvel. Uh, yeah, so we know that The Hunt for Wolverine is a series of books that we started with the one-off book and then it kind of is feeding into the four other stories that are giving us a little bit more character, not that we necessarily needed it for Logan, but character development and the filling in some of the gaps about what happened from when he got encased in the adamantium to when he got out. And then they're going to pick up the Wolverine story after all of those books have come to an end. Well, it seems like it's going to be a little bit longer than we initially anticipated because they just announced that there is another book that is going to be happening. It's called Dead Ends. Uh, and it's going to be happening in August, is the issue number one. Uh, there is very, very, very little known about this book, aside from the fact that there is going to be some sort of uh, Fantastic Four tie-in based on some of the alt uh, alternate covers for the Fantastic Four, which is kind of what announced this book. It was, yeah, very weird. Uh, maybe they're just going to keep doing these random story arcs that don't deal with Wolverine directly, like... They were being super secretive about it, and they were saying it's going to be this crazy thing, and that would be a really crazy thing. Uh, though, my money still says they might do this trick once or twice more. Might. That's a very, very big might. I really, really think, though, once this book finally comes to an end, very likely going to be another four-book uh, mini arc. Um, and then once that finally happens in September, we're going to see an actual Wolverine book come back onto the shelves. And then Marvel's going to sell millions <laughs> because that's apparently everyone's favorite X-Men. But that is where we end this week's comic book news video, guys. What did I miss? What should we talk about next week? Let me know in the comments down below if, though, you want to go deeper into the conversation, jump over to the website, generallynerdy.net. That is the place you can go get all of the other freebies. You can find the social media links. You can get your nerdy swag over at generallynerdy.net. Or, if you want to support the channel a little more directly, jump over to the Patreon, patreon.com slash generallynerdy. You can jump on for just a dollar a month. There are more tiers where you get more stuff, but the lowest tier is a dollar. Dollar is hundred pennies. It's real simple. Check it out, Generally Nerdy on Patreon, patreon.com slash generallynerdy. If you are new to the channel, click the subscribe button. If you like this episode, click that like button. If you are falling behind on your nerd news and you want to catch up, click or tap that box right there to the left of my face to do that. But before we go, before we click boxes and visit websites and things, guys, always, always remember that if it's generally nerdy, it's probably here. <laughs>